shalom, shalom, shalom. Shabbat shalom, y'all. So, how y'all doing? You know what? I had to come on today because I wanted to really talk about something really important when it comes to this truth. All right, and what truth am I talking about? Truth of knowing who you are, knowing the Father, and uh, as the chosen people, Zion. So, what I want to talk about is why is it that some of our people, when they hear spiritual warfare, they tend to back away in fear, like, oh no, oh my goodness, I don't want to do that. <laughs> it's like, you're going to have to. Because if you understand that tests, trials, tribulations, they come to make you stronger, then you will realize that, listen, this is just a part of it. This is just a part of the walk. It's a part of the journey into where the Most High wants you to go. These things are going to happen because it's going to make you stronger. That's why he tells you to put on the whole armor. Arm up! Fight! Fight! <laughs> but is but you first of all you got to have faith that the most high the most powerful force on the planet and the universe has your back you can't lose right messiah my guardian angel my warring angels i know some of y'all don't like to talk about angels but come on look at daniel who came when he prayed his angel that was blocked by the prince of persia we do have angels. When it comes to healing, I call on my ministering and healing angels. And that's what happens. And apply tongues and the Ruach HaKadosh. But spiritual warfare is just, it's, it's a part of making us into the warriors that he wants us to be. You know, I mean, even when, I mean, I've always had that warrior spirit even when i was back in my unit i was the best of my female fighters not bragging <laughs> okay just saying right i'm not gonna bring it but if you bring it i'm gonna finish it just it, it that's just what it is you have to know that there's gonna be struggles okay there's gonna be times when the enemy comes in with his evasive self and they want to what? Steal, kill, and destroy. You just gonna lay down and let them do it? No. Some I, I was listening to somebody today, and this is how you know when somebody is truly, truly for Abba Yah or not. They don't just talk the talk. They talk the talk and they walk the walk. Okay? There's, there's just no emptiness behind their words. You understand when certain things or affliction come upon you, you don't go run to the enemy's devices. You don't go run to sorcery. That's his stuff. How are you going to defeat Satan or the enemy with his own stuff? That's, that's what he's using to control our people and keep them in bondage. You think that, like, what? <laughs> Think about it. We still in this this situation where you in this tug of war and still depending on them. Your sorcery ain't helping. Clearly, it's helping their kingdom, and might help you a little bit for time. Until it's time to pay the piper. The Most High says that you gonna have to repent of that sorcery too. All right? I saw someone talking about you. This is how you see a little sneaky. A little sneaky slitheriness, because some of our people are just like serpents. Sneaky. One minute they over there, yeah, you know, I got you the most high this, the most high that, and and we the chosen. And the next minute, when a little bit of affliction comes, they over there running to go grab Satan's stuff. <laughs> you know? Like, what? What? You got the scripture, you got the Bible, you got the sword. You got the word to fight any demonic entity that comes against you. And you go run for a skull? You go run to the... Come on, man. You, you see what I'm saying? Some of y'all get mad when we talk about things like, 
all of our people can't make it. Even some of y'all over here, like, you know the truth, but you're not willing to put the work in. You're not willing to actually go into warfare when the Most High calls you into and say, come on. Moses had to do it. The prophets had to do it. The people of the Bible had to do it. When the Most High said, come on, okay, this is what you got to do before you go into battle. Some of y'all are on this, you know, just lay back and let the Most High do it. <laughs> you still have to be obedient. You still have to obey him. When I said what I said about the, uh, you know, going into spiritual warfare, when you do big things like, you know, revelation or prophecy or things like that to uncover the enemy's kingdom, you got to always be praying. You got to be ready for that stuff. Right? Moses, I'm not saying I'm Moses, but I'm just saying, <laughs> they had to always be in communication with their higher power our elohim is just a given why would you fear it, as soon as y'all do that stuff and hop off the bandwagon and say you know let me go run and get my crystal real quick or my candle to burn or whatever else it's showing your faithlessness the reason i read revelation too is just to show like some of the things that our people are perpetuating then and are still doing now and won't let go because you think when you're right you're right and you're wrong why do you think the scripture says suffer not a witch to live because you realize that this whole kingdom what keeps it afloat is witchcraft and sorcery all you doing is marking yourself for destruction when that day comes upon you. Use your spiritual intelligence. Use your even your, your own blessed intelligence. You can't use the devices of the enemy against the enemy. No, you helping out his kingdom. I always say to myself, listen, because I've seen some people who have been dibbling and dabbling in witchcraft and some stuff overtake them. You willfully went into that to go do somebody harm. That's what you did. Some of y'all say, oh, it's protection. Girl, bye. Boy, bye. <laughs> you got the scriptures. You got the sword, the two-edged sword that the Messiah is going to use to destroy the enemies. And you mean to tell me you still don't have faith to go run to that? You have the most powerful Elohim ever in the universe in your backative and your front and surrounding you the messiah and all of the devices he gave you but you still run into the enemy just shows y'all is still faithless as much as i don't even want the great tribulation to come down this is the reason why some of y'all hear spiritual warfare you run and you cower i find it rather rejuvenating because it makes you that much more powerful in your walk takes you up levels i just saw another casualty that the most high like as i said i, I have my list i pray over it he came around maybe four or five months ago this was a coon back in my uh heydays <clears throat> and he was over there doing, you know, the side work for the heathens against his own people. And, uh, yeah, he don't understand why hell done broke loose in his life. He over there, I'm not going to tell you what is going on with him, but it's a battle for his life. And you got to know what you're doing. Because you step out of the protection of the Most High, you in enemy territory. The devil eats his own as well, so I don't even know why it is that you would want to run to him, thinking that you in good standing. Like, come on, man. And it, it's like we keep regurgitating, going back to old things like a dog to its vomit. Sometimes you wonder why, you know, your mind is certain ways. It's because y'all messing in some stuff you don't have no business messing in. 
The Most High said he's a Elohim of the living. Why would you want to go mess with dead things? Skulls and things from cemeteries and craziness. Like, <sighs> gosh, man. <sighs> this is... And then some of y'all, like, I, I hate to, I have to say some because I want to generalize everybody. But you wonder why things go awry in your life is because you're choosing a lesser God. You're choosing a lesser way. And because you're like, man, it worked for you before. <laughs> you're as bad as them Christians. But you're not doing the will of our Elohim. So anyway, like, spiritual warfare is not something for you to fear. You've got to have faith. That's one of the most powerful elements to it. Once you know who your Elohim is, that's what our people always needed to know. That's what he wanted our people to know. Listen, I got you. Greater than all else. Able to fight your battles and win. You just got to be obedient. If he says to go into to prayer or warfare or read the scriptures at this time, do it. It's not something to be fearful of. Your enemies or your haters will make you greater. That's the whole process of this. If you even read Revelation to the end, <laughs> what happens to those that survive, that come out of the great tribulation? They end up being what? Kings and priests and eternity of peace and joy. I know the whole process getting there is rough, but... Trust me, it's like like birth pains. I've never had children. But some of y'all mothers out there, you know, right? You go through the um the travel or the the birth pains, and then by the time you birth that beautiful little baby, it's like you don't even remember all that. You just, it's just what did you just birth? This new life. So anyway, I know. I just said a lot, but I had to say it. It's just, what are you doing? You've got the most powerful element. And I know the Bible was translated into the heathen's language, okay? But I know the scripture in terms of through the spirit of prophecy, which is the Ruach HaKadosh. You read the Bible into Revelation, it says the Bible is the book of prophecy. It is. It is the book of prophecy. And the testimony of Hamashiach is a spirit of prophecy. And the spirit of prophecy shows you're going to need the Ruach HaKadosh to read this book in its depth. Why don't you, instead of seeking out the enemy stuff, go deeper and seek the Most High. So he can truly, truly open your mind to the things that are just like beyond this world that your enemy can't really, it can't really give it to you. So, anyway, I'm going to close this out, and uh, I wanted to read. Uh, I'm still doing my spiritual warfare. It's just, it's just something that is natural in, you know, in this move. It's just something that's natural. Scripture, John 15, verses 18 to 27 says, If the world hate you, ye know that it hated me before it hated you. If ye were of the world, the world would love its own. But because ye are not of the world, but I have chosen you out of the world, therefore the world hateth you. Remember the word that I said unto you, the servant is not greater than his Lord. If they have persecuted me, they will also persecute you. If they have kept my saying, they will keep yours also. But all these things will they do unto you for my name's sake, because they know not him that sent me. Now, I want y'all to really understand this persecute you part. Because some of y'all, especially some, some of the Christians, they think they were persecuting them. Honey, no. Who has the power to throw you in prison? Who has the power for, for minor infractions? 
Who has the power to affect where you live, how you live, what you eat, how you spend your money, relationships you have, and more? Who can do these things? There ain't little people on the sidewalk necessarily. <laughs> what are the people out here who reading your scriptures like this? No. Think about it. Anyway. But all these things they uh will they do unto you for my name's sake, because they know not him that sent me. Same thing we said, they don't know the most high. If I had not come and spoken unto them, they had not had sin, but now they have no cloak for their sin. He that hateth me hateth my father also. If I had not done among them the works which none other man did, they had not sinned. But now have they both seen and hated both me and my father. So basically he's showing you that he coming exposed their sin. At first they were acting like they, you know, with the hypocrisy like, mm, you know, we're good. We, we don't have no sin. We don't need no exposure. We don't need no conviction we don't they're good but the messiah came and showed them up he uncovered their sin but this coming to pass that the word might be fulfilled that is written in their law they hated me without a cause but when the comforter is come whom i will send unto you from the father even the spirit of truth which proceeded from the father he shall testify of me. And we talk about those who have the testimony of Hamashiach, which is the spirit of prophecy. We're going to get into that a little bit more, okay, y'all? And ye shall, ye also shall bear witness because ye have been with me from the beginning. It was, it was already planned out. To stick in it brothers and sisters ox and accordance don't give up think about this you a job or a judas hmm? you in it to win it or are you ready to throw out throw it out for some coins that eventually you know the way things turn out you and the coins ain't gonna make it right gotta be steadfast Trust your Elohim like Job did. You know who he is. I remember you had some of these females talking about, girl, stop talking to these dudes. Just leave them. Or stop talking. Just let, they going to do what they want to do. It makes no sense. You're wasting your breath. All I said was, listen, I know my Elohim. He the same one make them. Guess what? Because if I turn on them, I'm turning on myself. I'm turning on, I'm going to turn on my Elohim. So what sense does that make? He's the one that can destroy my soul and my body, but they don't understand that. He's the one that created them. He can create some more. So when you know your creator, you already know what's up. Ain't no flip-flopping. Ain't no compromising. Anybody come put a bug in your ear, you'd be like, move on with that. Bye. Sorry, yeah, but <laughs> we know enemies are set up at every corner. But you got to keep your eyes on the prize. All right, anyway, I done said a lot. Shabbat shalom, y'all. And um, don't be afraid of spiritual warfare, man. Arm up. And get ready. Shalom.